lenses. Here we have a converging lens, which is a convex shape like this. This is the actual shape that the lens would be, thicker in the middle. Just running through some of the terms, we have the rays coming in here from the left, and the rays here are parallel. More about that in a minute. The, the lens brings the rays together at what's known as the focal point. That is only if the rays are parallel will they be brought together at the focal point. OK, the focal point is the focal length beyond the lens. So this distance here is the focal length, which is from the lens to the focal point where parallel rays are brought together. We can also have a diverging or concave lens. Now, a concave lens is this shape, and I remember it as being kind of like the entrance to a cave going in. And that makes the rays diverge. So here we've got the parallel rays coming in from the left, and they diverge out. OK, now the rays have not actually come from here. This is a dotted line showing that these are virtual rays. They're not real rays. Ray light doesn't actually take this path. We just think it has because it's coming out here and we, we assume that light travels in straight lines. So we see it as coming from here. So these rays again are parallel and the focal point is where the rays now appear to have come from. And again, it is the focal length behind the lens. So the focal point is where parallel rays, which are from a distant object, will converge. What do we mean by a distant object? Well, here I've got a torch, and you can clearly see that the light from the torch is diverging. It's spreading out. So these lines I've added are not parallel. But if we go further away, here I've got the same torch, but we're further away from it. And effectively here, the rays are almost parallel. As we get further away from the object, the divergence of the rays becomes less significant. Um, the rays from an infinite distance away object would be parallel. In reality, we can treat rays as parallel as long as they're coming from a much further away than the focal length. So if you've got a focal length of 15 centimetres and an object is 10 metres away, that can be taken as effectively infinity. To find the focal length, we simply focus an image of a distant object and then measure the distance between the lens and the screen. Here I just have a magnifying glass and a piece of paper stuck on the fridge and I'm pointing the magnifying glass towards the window and you'll see as I move the magnifying glass I get a clear image at a certain distance I get a clear image of the shed which is probably about 15 metres away on the piece of paper. You'll also notice that the shed is upside down. So all I would need to do in that film would be to measure the distance from the piece of paper to the magnifying glass, and that would give me the focal length of the lens. To draw ray diagrams, there are simple rules that we need to follow, and then we're going to run through three different examples of a ray diagram. Any ray arriving parallel to the principal axis, that's the axis that goes through the centre of the lens, will go through, or just appear to go through, one of the focal points of the lens. There's a focal point on either side of the lens. If a ray hits the centre of the lens, it passes straight through, unaffected, and rays that pass through a focal point will emerge parallel to the principal axis. In reality, we can reduce that to two rules. Any rays that are involved with focal points will also arrive or leave parallel. And in this case, so in this case, the rays are arrive, arriving parallel and going through the focal point. In this case, the rays are going through the focal point and leaving parallel. So basically, if you just remember that parallel rays are linked to the focal point and rays through the center will pass straight through. I'm going to run through that with a few examples now. First, in something like a camera, we have the object here. Objects are usually drawn as arrows, and then we can see whether they're the correct way up or upside down. And this is the focal point at one side of the lens. This is how we draw a converging lens. A diverging lens, as we'll see in a minute, has got this arrowhead going the other way. And this is the other focal point. This then is the focal length, which is the same as this focal length. So following those rules, we can draw the first ray which is leaving parallel, it's coming along here parallel to the principal axis. This is the principal axis. It hits the lens here, and then it will pass through the focal point. So a parallel ray through the focal point. 
array going through the center of the lens just keeps going straight through. And a ray that comes through this focal point will leave parallel. All three rays are coming together at this point, so this is where the image will be. And so we have an inverted image here. This is like I had a minute ago on the piece of paper on the fridge. So this is our image. Now, there are things we can say about the image. In this case, the image is real because these are all actual rays that actually travel through here. It is inverted. This arrow is upside down compared to this one. And it's diminished, which means it's, it's smaller. This arrow here, the object, is bigger than the image. So the image is diminished. Another way of telling that the image is real is that the object is on one side of the lens, the image is on the other side of the lens. Now a different situation. This is an object that is within the focal point, for instance with a magnifying glass. With a magnifying glass, here we have the magnifying glass, this is the observer, and the object is closer than the focal point. If you were looking at, for instance, a flower with a magnifying glass, you'd hold the magnifying glass very close to the flower, and you would be on the other side. Okay, this is our lens, a converging lens again, and we can do the same thing. A ray going parallel to the principal axis will then go through the focal point. And a line going, a ray, sorry, going through the center will keep going. In this case, we can't use this focal point, but now what we do is we trace rays as to where we feel that the light has come from. So these are virtual rays. The ray doesn't really do this. The light doesn't really travel along this path. Hence, I've drawn it uh, in a dashed line. But this is where we believe that the, the ray has come from because we're used to light traveling in straight lines. So now the image will be here. And now the image is bigger than the object. They're both pointing upwards. And these are not real rays. They're virtual rays. So now we can say, that the image is virtual, it is upright, and it is magnified because the image is bigger than the object. Now for a diverging lens. This is how a diverging lens is drawn. Our object is here, focal point here, and we're going to be looking at it from here. So again, we can have a ray going parallel to the principal axis. It will then come away as if it's come from the focal point. A ray going through the center continues. We can now trace back this virtual ray as if the ray has come from the focal point because it was parallel as it came in. Okay, and now where these rays cross here, we can draw our image. And now this is a virtual ray, and so it must be a virtual image. The image is smaller than the object, and it is the same way up. So you can say that the image is virtual, it is upright, and it is diminished. 